In this episode, I'm going to be talking about what kind of tablet should you get? When should you get a tablet? Is it possible to animate with a mouse? I'm going to try and answer all of those questions in this video. This is mainly for new and up and coming animators who are starting out and want to know about tablets and if it's possible to animate with a mouse, if it's recommended to animate with a mouse. My advice is you should absolutely get a tablet and stop using a mouse for drawing because a mouse is not a drawing instrument and it will really hold you back. As soon as you get the opportunity to go out, buy a tablet, it will make you draw naturally because you're drawing with an actual pencil. I get a lot of people saying that they can't afford a tablet as well. Uh, this is going to sound a bit brutal but my advice is to stop animating, spend all your time saving up money so that you can buy a tablet. So that can be doing odd jobs for people, however you can save up some money and then just get the cheapest tablet out there. You know. It doesn't have to be the most expensive tablet. This one I got is second hand, it's the cheapest one I could find for the model that it is. But even this one, they're fairly expensive compared to a lot of the other types of tablets that you can get. I would recommend just starting off at the absolute minimum um, if you are finding it hard to get a tablet. So one of the cheapest tablets is made by this company called Gaumon um, and I will provide a link in the description for where you can go and buy one of them. I'm not paid to say that but they sent me over one of their tablets to try out and uh, you know I thought it was okay, I didn't think it was the best tablet ever but it got the job done. It's the cheapest one I can find out there which is why I'm um, you know recommending it here for people who don't really have a lot of money to be spending, that's the cheapest one I could find. With regards to how much of a difference there is between a cheap tablet and a high-end tablet, I would actually say that there's very little difference in what you can make, the potential that you can fulfill with a small tablet versus a large tablet. I would actually say that they're pretty much the same. You know, during my uh, education and my career, I've jumped around from pretty much all the different types of tablets that there are, and I just found that uh, this size screen is the one that's best for me. And um, I do like animating with the screen, but it's not essential. You know, I can go back onto a Wacom Bamboo anytime I want and um, it's fine, you know. So I'll just show you what one of them looks like. So the Bamboo, I think this is what it's called. I had an even older version than this and it lasted me about four years. So it, you get a lot of use out of these before they stop. Now, Wacom, this brand is the number one brand to get and if you decide to go with any other brand especially with one with a with a retina display you are taking a risk i guess it won't be as established as wacom and wacom really dominate the market with these things so if you want to be guaranteed that you'll get a high quality product that you'll get lots of use out of just go with the wacom brand they have a huge variety in prices so there will probably be one that they have that will suit you. Once you get a tablet and you've got your software, let's say it's Adobe Flash, then I just say, you know, stop thinking about it because then you can get onto the good stuff. Uh, one of the mistakes I made when I was younger was uh, thinking that the quality of people's animations was dependent on what kind of tablet they use, which is completely wrong. There are like professionals in the industry who still work off of these things and they produce amazing work and then there are you know, amateurs who work on Cintiq 24 HDs, which cost thousands of dollars, and their work is pretty bad because they don't know their fundamentals. So it's not really about the tablet at all. It's not about the hardware or the software. It's all about your experience, your skills, and your imagination and your confidence. Okay, the other thing I did want to mention is that it is possible to animate with a mouse it's not easy and it's not efficient, it's very slow, but let's say you're, you know, you're away from your tablet, maybe your tablet is broken or something and you're waiting for a replacement and you're really itching to get animating, um, there is a way to animate with a mouse and instead of going into that in a lot of detail myself, um, there's an animator called Haytam who has um, explained it in a lot of detail. He's been on my radar for a long time and he makes really good animations and this method does work. I tried it when I was very young before I had the tablet. It is a good method. 
if you are desperate for one but i would say only use that if let's say you're using someone else's computer and you want to quickly make something that's probably the best way to go about it so yeah go to check out Haytam. he's a really great animator um, subscribe to his channel and everything and watch his videos he posts very infrequently but you know they're always really good if you've got enough money to go get a tablet then just get a tablet it's so so worth the investment it's probably the best investment I've made as an animator in my life to my subscribers I need your help I get so many comments from beginner animators asking me what tablet they should buy and um, you know whether they should get a tablet please if you see a comment on one of my videos or one of some someone else's videos or on a forum or on a chat or anything like that and they're asking about this just send them this video or just you giving them your own advice on it then that you know helps me out and it helps all the creators out there okay it's time to look at our animation spotlight of the week this week it goes to Joshua Galpin aka Spectre. In this demo he's got, he created a really nice collection of animation clips. Uh, I really like how he demonstrates physics in all of them, kind of appreciation for the materials and the scale of things. Um, one of my favourite clips in this was this uh, runner and just how he runs is very loose because of how he's redrawn it. But also this little bird, I really like this because the way it moves you can really get a sense for the weight of the bird and how small it is and light um, and yeah it's just very playful I like what he's done with the colors just nice simple color ideas so yeah I like to see this kind of work go check out his channel he's got more animations over on there if you'd like to get featured on the animation spotlight just send me a video if you want to send it in a comment or something or a direct message you can do that and then you might be featured in the next video all right, now back to the video. I also just wanted to add one other a technique you can use if you're starting out. Um, most animators start out by doing something that's not this, but if I were to go back in time and have to learn animation again from scratch, I would do it mostly just traditionally with pencil on paper in sketchbooks. Um, and I would create storyboard sketches to make animatics. That is like the best way you can level up your skill fast and uh, create animations without having any hardware, any software other than just pencil, paper and a camera. So if you have a camera and you have a simple editing software, it could be Windows Movie Maker, which is free software, um, then you can sequence photographs in that software to tell a short story. Okay, they wouldn't be animated, they wouldn't be moving, but you'd be able to tell stories in that way and that is the, like probably the biggest skill in animation and the hardest one to overcome. So if you're wondering like how you can practice your animation uh, abilities and make animations with no software, no hardware really, apart from of course the editing suite and a camera, then you might want to try that. Maybe you're traveling, maybe you're living in an area that doesn't have electricity. You can still do that, you know? So those are kind of ways that animation can be very accessible, but you have to have some trade-offs. You have to be willing to sacrifice the quality a little bit. But I challenge any of you to go and do that for a while. If you're struggling to get the funds for hardware or software, that's another option. Please subscribe down below if you haven't already. Check out my website, animatorguild.com. Uh, that's where you can find loads more resources for animators, such as uh, more tutorials, downloads, um, my recommended books and movies for learning animation, uh, a forum, private workshops, and much, much more. So yeah, also check the links in the description. I have links to loads of useful resources for you. Yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. So now we're gonna have a look at the different types of construction. These are just constructions that I've noticed um, people make um, in the animators community and my sort of uh, commentary on them. So, um, I started off with mine, 